I'm coming in. I'm coming in. Yes, he is. What's ah, up? <laughs> What's up? I want to welcome in Meredith Taylor uh, to Inside the Gamecocks, the show, former Gamecock golfer. Uh, obviously, you've heard the commercials. Um, I keep joking about how bad I am at golf, but uh, uh, I'm sure. I'm <laughs> when sure are we going to get you on the golf course? I just have no idea. Come on, I mean, JC. I, you know, I need to get on it because my, my buddies are in Illinois, in the neighborhood I live up in Illinois, and they, they're all in their 70s, right? <laughs> we, right, we, right. We, 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 me and the lady, we up, up, up north you have neighborhood bars because it's cold, so so people don't you know congregate outside a whole lot. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so so everybody's in their seventies, and they all go and play uh, when the during the three months the weather's warm. Uh, and I feel bad because I'm like not in my seventies, and I can't even pick up the bar. So uh, <laughs> we're anyway, gonna fix that. Don't worry, we gotta fix it. So uh, obviously, um, yeah. So take us through what exactly has been going on. Uh, with with your playing and now transitioning into teaching uh, and, and all of that good stuff. Just give everybody kind of an update uh, sure. on, on where things are at with Meredith Taylor. Of course. Well, thank you for having me on the show. First of all, I love the sure. show. And hello, Gamecock Nation. I see everybody in the Nana's porch chat line um, <laughs> talking about talking about the golf courses. But um, yeah, it's going to be great. I am finishing up, you know, obviously I can't turn pro just yet because I'm going to play a couple amateur tournaments and that'll kind of finalize the quote unquote amateur career. Um, so I, I played last year um, with my big brother. We won the mixed championship here in South Carolina. And so that'll be kind of special as kind of my one of one of my final events as an amateur to play with my big brother. And we'll defend that championship um, in October and uh, coming up in a, in a week, I'll have uh, my final USGA event, which is the, USGA women's mid amateur. Who knows if I can qualify, but I'm, I'm like, why not? Let's take, let's give it one more shot yeah, um, and, and see if we can qualify for that. And if I do qualify, that's down in Florida in September. So a couple more months of, of my playing days uh, before I go full time into teaching and, and coaching. And so I, I'm really looking forward to it though. That's really my, my passion. And, uh, and really just love helping people. And and what a great game. You, you can still play until you're 70 years old and just have a good time with your bros. I mean, that's that's <laughs> that's so much fun. So you can play it at a high level. You can you can play it on the weekends with with friends. And so I'm I'm looking forward to that that kind of next chapter. That that's okay. that's that's my attraction to golf. And it you know, when when I really got into playing I was playing a little right. Well, I was in the newspaper business, so I, I kind of had Saturdays off at time. Uh but you know, we I, I just kind of getting out on the course, smelling that grass. Yes, and and, 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 oh. and the, the quiet nature of the game, and and the the you know almost the the, the thought that goes into it. You know, you could almost yeah. Feel, it's crazy. You could almost feel the thought. Feel a thought that was kind of well. It's almost a thought. reference to it too. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of my buddies was like Sunday church, and then it's almost like I go to the golf course and have church again because it's very <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a reverence. It's um, being out and out outdoors and on some of the most beautiful pieces of property that you can be on and just enjoy. Um, yeah, it's it's a great game. Uh, well, yeah, and I, I enjoy anything you can uh, do sport wise that you can have a couple of beverages too. So <laughs> it's well uh, Hey, I, I, I probably should. I'd probably be a better player if I did that. Probably better than did that. You're loosen <laughs> up a little bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah no doubt. I was thinking, uh, and just looking, you know, through some of the stuff he had sent us. Take take us through what it's like to be recruited as a golfer. Oh college. boy, well, it's what, very what different these nice days. Um, <laughs> I probably I joke with with a lot of juniors. I'm like, I probably wouldn't have made it to South Carolina if it were in today's world because I didn't I didn't get into golf until high school. And you know, recruit recruiting. I mean, goodness gracious, it's like. Uh, 12 year old shoots par and they're like, oh, do you want to be signed right now? Um, <laughs> but in, in, you know, playing multiple sports, I, I was a basketball player. I played other things. And so I didn't, I stumbled into golf because my dad and brother played. We got, um, long story short, we had badges uh, as patrons to Augusta national to the, to the master's tournament. Mm -hmm. And, um, so my grandfather bought them back in the like late fifties, early sixties, when it wasn't the tournament that it is today. Today it's this global everybody no. who's not. I mean, if you're not even if you're not a golfer, you know what the Masters is. Yeah. Um, but back then they were just begging people to to buy to buy badges. And so my my granddad got tick got badges, 
And so right before high school, I went to the tournament and that is what sparked everything for me to see those PGA tour players up close at kind of the Mecca of golf on those hollowed grounds um, where the greats have gone. I mean, that was, that was the spark that was like, Hey, let's go to the driving range when we get home. And it, it, funny story, the, the high school um, golf coach, Lexington high school uh, went to the country club of Lexington to hit golf balls for the first time. And the head coach was there and he looked at me like, I knew you were a basketball player. How long have you been playing golf? And, you know, he's seeing me hit balls. And I'm like, dad, how long have we been out here? And he's like, you're on the team. We need you to be. I'm like, I don't know the rules. He's like, I'll teach you the rules. It's fine. I don't know the rules. Yeah. You don't need to know the rules. You can smack a golf ball. We're good to go. You're on the team. And so I didn't know what I was doing, but, you know, I shot, I picked it up very quickly, shot from the hundred, like my four years in high school, I was, it was hundreds, nineties, eighties, and then seventies. So yeah. it was just a very, very steep learning curve. And I really loved the game and, and the challenge of it mentally and just um, all the things that come with it. But, um, you know, <laughs> to, to be recruited uh, in today's world, I never would have gotten to South Carolina. Uh, I have my coach, Christy Coggins, who was my coach at South Carolina. She saw me at a South Carolina junior golf event playing against some of her highly touted recruits, and I beat them. And she was like, who in the world is this? Where did she come from? Because, you know, in the junior golf world, you're playing national junior golf tournaments all over the place to get, you know, in that ranking system to get noticed by the top SEC schools. I didn't even know that story existed because I came from basketball. So playing in those local South Carolina Junior Golf Association events really is is all I knew to do. Um, so thank goodness she was out there recruiting, you know, looking at her prized recruits. And then I happened to be there uh, playing really well. So, um, you know, the only thing that the only places that looked at me were D2 schools and and the the fact that I that there was a walk on opportunity at South Carolina was a a blessing, um, to be honest. So my my story is a little different than everybody else's. <laughs> that's a, that's a, an amazing story, though, and that's uh, that, and that's that. So many things happen in sports that way, you know. Right. Uh, I, I know some football players that, um, you know, like back in the two thousands when college coaches could go to the Shrine Bowl, you know, these kids would arrive at Shrine Bowl week with no offers, you know, maybe. Right. Maybe Presbyterian wants them to walk on, uh, and they'd leave with, uh, you know, maybe not everybody, but like a Georgia Tech or a Wake Forest would come in and get them, and those kids would go on and have good careers in the ACC. And uh, exactly, if it weren't for that showcase, you know, um, so you you, so you grew up in Lexington, were you Lexington High School. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, I just uh, I, I got to the next line. I was like, okay, Lexington House here. A wildcat, right? I'm a wildcat. Uh, that's good. And then attended the Masters and all that good stuff. But you also uh, are quite a uh, quite involved with the uh, USC uh, Letterman, uh, the George Rogers Foundation, uh, uh, the, your alma mater, your college alma mater in general. And and you also right. uh, have been on JB and Goldwater, 107 about the game. So, so, so you're kind of a sports media personality. Uh, and not and not just a former golfer, you know. I wouldn't go that far, but I, I, I miss our, our JB and Goldwater days. This is a lot of fun. But um, JB reached out to me several years ago, and and the U.S. Women's Open was going to be in Charleston in 2019. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, I need your help. Not a huge golfer. You know, don't know how to talk <laughs> about it. So I need you to come on and be like the golf analyst for the week. Um, I, I know a lot of those girls on the tour, and so it was a blast. And I just have fun going on and talking, talking ball, talking shop, um, especially when it comes to something that I'm passionate about, like golf. And so to kind of marry the two with Gamecock athletics and golf, it's just, you know, kind of a match made in heaven. And we had a great time. Um, they got to see some really high level golf. It's amazing to me. Some guys that have never seen the LPGA Tour play, caliber player play golf and then they get there and they're like, uh, what is this? This is insane. These girls are so good. They don't miss a shot. And, you know, it's just, it's fun mm -hmm. to have them kind of experience that for the first time. And, and so I had a blast doing that. And then they, they also had me back for the PGA championship that was down at Kiowa Island and got to be the golf analyst on several different shows down there in Charleston. So I've, I've had a blast with it. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a media personality, but just love talking about it for sure. 
Yeah, I gotta gotta get to your opinion of. Um... <laughs> and, and, all right, so so I gotta frame this in, in, in a way. Uh, so the, the the LIV thing. Um, oh and the, yeah. The split on the PGA, <laughs> uh, and I know there's the political angles to it and all that, but of course, it, my, my question is for the sport in general, for just overall the, the sport of golf. Uh, what's your take on that? It's tough to watch. Mm -hmm. Um, I agree with Tiger Woods on a lot of the, in fact, I went on a podcast before he had his interview and it was basically verbatim what I said, which was very much Arnie and Jack built the PGA tour. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and to honor those, I'm very big on honoring those that have gone before you. Um, those guys didn't get to play for a lot of money and the guys today play for a lot of money. And so there's kind of an obligation to protect the integrity of the tour, to protect the traditions and just of the game and of the, of the PGA tour. And, and Arnie and Jack kind of passed the baton to Tiger in that way. And he's held up um, obviously his, his end on saying, listen, I, I understand you have every right to go play for money, but uh, for me, um, it, it's tough to see the divisiveness of, to be honest, I kind of have Tiger's view on it too, that that's not even a tour because a tour is 72 holes and there's a cut. Um, you know, the, the fact that it's only 54 holes, there's no cut. You could shoot 40 over par. I mean, come on now. Phil Mickelson's 10, 10 rounds on the on this LIV series. He's like 40 over par. Who wants to watch that? <laughs> like there, you've got to play a certain level. And you, if you don't make the cut, you don't make the cut. Like I'm, I'm sitting here on radio because I can't shoot 63 on the LPGA tour. Like there are standards that have to be met to play. Um, so yeah, it, yeah that's just my personal opinion. I, I don't like it, but they have every right to go and and, and get their money. But to then turn around and and try to sue them, I mean, those golfers, frankly, abandoned the PGA tour uh, tour that made them. Um, and they willfully joined a competitor league. And so they knew, like, they understood the consequences of that action very well before they they left. And um, it, you made the decision, you got to live with it, right? You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't, can't play both of these, um, you know, the PJ Tour and the Live Series. Yeah, I mean... When uh, Snoop and Dre left and uh, founded Death Row <laughs> Records, they knew what they were doing, right? Hey, that's right. You you made yeah. your decision. You got to live with it. Heck yeah. Um, okay, we're going to get Nana Sports chat line. We got a couple of uh, – we had the one question from Cartwright about uh, LIV, and then uh, Evan Small has, uh, has a question. Uh, okay. Uh, he says, I picked up golf while pitching in college and fell in love with the game. It's about the only thing that satisfies my competitive side these days. He's shooting the high 80s. Any tips to break 80? Oh, a lot of tips to break 80. Um, it would depend. I would have to see him play golf. But typically, most amateurs that are, are shooting in the 80s and want to get in the 70s, it's, it's a matter of course management. It's a matter of short game, to be honest. Everybody Ooh. can hit it. When you're shooting in the 80s, you can hit it pretty well. But the, the short game, you're probably duffing a chip here and there or missing putts and and so it's probably dialing in your short game is probably the easiest answer until you know i could i could actually see the person play yeah absolutely and you'll be able to do that uh when you when you start uh, teaching at, out at lexington country club or there's a uh, in november don't forget uh, she's going to start opening uh, she's opening an online course where you can like send in your swing and get her to break it down for you and that, that's right that's uh, that's going to be popular, I think. Very popular uh, around here. Um, all right, so switching sports a little bit. We, we know what's coming up in two weeks. Uh, yes, sir. Let's go. <laughs> you, 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 you know, fired up about that a little bit. What, what's your thought? What are your thoughts on the forthcoming uh, football season? I'm I'm trying hard to kind of temper my I don't want to say excitement, but yeah, I just, I just look at this team and it's. It's it's a so, so much better of a situation than last year, <laughs> yes. roster wise. Yes, and you know you've got the the, the head coaches of obviously Shane Beamer's uh, they got an infectious personality. Uh, just what Doctor ordered for this program. But, uh, you know your take on uh, what's going to get cranking here in 
It'll be fi- uh, uh, 14 days from tomorrow, so 15 from today. Can't wait. Um, I'm ov- obviously cautiously optimistic as well because I, I've been a game crack my whole life and I have scar tissue. Um, I was in the stands for the 0 and 11 season. Like I go way back. Uh, um, diehard Gamecock. So, uh, but I love the fact that we have depth this year. My goodness. It, it, you look at every position and I'm like fired up because we've got options. We can rotate out people yeah. <laughs> and people don't get gassed in the third quarter by the third quarter. Um, yeah. it, it's so exciting. And I, I'm pumped the, for the direction that Beamer has taken this, this whole program, the people he's hiring, the quality of individuals. He, even little things like inviting the letterman to mm-hmm. to come be a part of the program and just creating that atmosphere of of everybody being one big Gamecock family. I love what he's doing, um, but the man can recruit, and I'm fired up about all the the in state guys. It's exactly what he did back when he was here with Spurrier. Is keeping mm-hmm. that those in state guys in state. That that's the start of you know we had Stefan Gilmore, we had Alshon Jeffrey, we had Marcus, we had I mean just naming off all these guys that he brought in to do that again. I'm so fired up. Y'all don't even know. I'm so yeah. excited. <laughs> it's huge. They got, yeah. guys got, uh, they got the, the top four guys in the state that they wanted. I mean, they, it's, uh, it's huge. And three of the top four rankings wise. And yeah. And, and that's kind of what got it going the first time. And, you know, I must have signed his share of in-state guys, but it, it, it wasn't maybe as, I don't know. Frequent. I, I don't. I don't really. Right. Know, I, don't, I don't know how to describe that era. I think <laughs> as we get further and further from that era, uh, the more I look back at it and just scratch my head and go, "What in the world happened?" <laughs> I mean, what wasn't that? And, and, and I talk to Florida fans all the time that feel the same way about about when Champ was down there. It's just like they're like, you know, JC. We, we love Will Muschamp. We, we thought he was a good coach, a good guy. Uh, he's a man's man. He, you know, he he, he took. Took it had the best firing press conference ever at Florida, uh, you know, where he just basically hugged everybody, and right? Said goodbye, you know, and, and all, all of his former players love him. I mean, exactly. There's, there's no red flags, but it, it's just like the twilight zone where, wherever he coaches. Like, do, 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 do. You know, you're like you're sitting there all of a sudden, and you know, you, you've outgained the other team by 400 yards, and you're down by 30. Right. Like, What's going on? <laughs> what you is know? happening? Where your whole entire team is injured, you know, and it's, and, and it's like, you know, you're, oh man. But uh, I got, I got a, I got a nice little story about the, it's kind of an, an analogy about the Muschamp era. But uh, you know, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. Uh, we asked uh, Chris Phillips from the Spurs Up Show earlier today about this, and uh, so I'm gonna ask you: Are are you a person that you know, night before football season? Uh, I know I, I will, I, I'm like that. I, I, I can't sleep. I'm like a can't kid. Can't sleep? At, oh, yeah. Kid at Christmas, uh, tossing and turning uh, that night before that first game. Uh, or are you one that just kind of has your routine? Get the, you know, I get because some people are like, okay, night before kickoff, in bed by eight. I'll eat, I'll, I'll, <laughs> eat, I'll eat pizza rolls and drink seven up, and then I'll wake up. But, but no, so, 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 what, how do you approach it once we get right down to the day? Okay, so it's different than it used to be. I mean, our family was Gamecock club members for like 30 plus years. And we just recently let them go so we could get the whole family together at the house, oh, which yeah. is so much fun. Yes. Um, so we're like in this new era of watching Gamecock football from the house with everybody. And so it's different than it used to be. We would park in the fairgrounds, you know, obviously the tailgating. And so now it's like we're tailgating at the house. Um, and so I love it because we have a huge family. All Gamecocks, obviously. We all went to Carolina, basically. Oh, nice. um, and so we can invite friends over and have a great time. So, um, it, yeah, it's probably, like, now, like, more prepping for having everybody over. It's, yeah. it's not a day before game day now. But um, it, it's so much fun. And, yeah, I can't wait. I, I'm, I'm like, cautiously optimistic. But I'm also, like, that eternal, like, Gamecock fan that's like, we're going to win it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's got garment glasses on today. Yeah, yeah like, garment glasses go on. I'm just a fan. I'm not a media member, so you know, I'm like, we're going all the way. Let's do it. I, I handle it a little better now, you know, than, than I used to, but it's still like about that, that, that first loss, right? Uh, well, last, last year it wasn't that bad because it was Georgia, and I, I didn't expect right. It to that's that. true, but uh, the Kentucky loss uh, that was because uh, I was there. 
Oh. And I literally, me and my buddies, because that's the first one that you, know, you, you you're quite, you expected them to not be Georgia or whatever. But then they took you that one. That one's right. one you could have had. And so my buddy has a condo in Columbia up near the stadium. And so we're we're literally all just sitting there staring out at the lights of Williams Bryce like <laughs> like like the like the last like like the last scene from Ocean's Eleven where they're just looking at the at the, at the thing. Um, right. And, and, and it's so what it just still, happened. It still takes me twenty four hours uh, with that first one and it hits pretty hard. But then other than that, that's not it. I, I get you about doing it at home, man. I, I even if I lived in Columbia, I don't know that I wouldn't at times uh, take that route or, you know, cause I, it's just, it's just so much more comfortable and convenient. Oh, and it I, is. And, and get everybody together too. Right. That's, and and I, we went to a lifetime of games. Mm -hmm. I mean, really like 30 years. I mean, we we've been to a lifetime of, of games. So we've, we've had our fair share of doing that. Um, and, and so now to do it in just a more comfortable setting and have everybody over, it's so fun. Ooh. I'm gonna so have to fun. get uh, get the menu the menu yeah, from you get closer to the date, so I got to see what you're eating there. Uh, you know, I mean, it is the Nana's pork chat box, so you know this is true. Uh, this is true. Well, Meredith, um, uh, tell everybody uh, real quick before we let you go where they can go uh, on the website uh, to to get, find out more information about your teaching and sure. how you can play golf and all that good stuff. Yeah, well, you can follow me on Twitter at Mayor Taylor, M-E-R-T-A-Y-L-O-R. Um, I'm going to do a big launch once my my amateur playing uh, days are over and I've, I've finished these last couple tournaments. I'll do a big launch so everybody will know when I'm going full time teaching and also Great. on the website as well. Y'all have heard it on the on the commercial, but uh, McKellarEnterprises.org is where you'll see more details. There's frequently asked questions that are that are there. So if people have questions, they can always email me. Um, but that's the website and, and we'll have, we'll have a big launch. So everybody will know when uh, I go full-time teaching. Yeah. 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 I can't wait to, to get you on here there. And I, I hope people uh, take advantage of it. Meredith Taylor going to join us every Friday. So you, you get the last crack at picking games. Ooh, uh, yes. Before the, you're yeah, the, you're let's the last, go. Yeah. This, this same, you'll be the last person we hear from before. Uh, we Love it. Anyway, so that'll be good. We appreciate you being on Meredith and I uh, look forward to talking to you next Friday. Thank you so much for having me. Y'all have a good weekend. Thanks, Thanks you too. Uh, inside the Gamecocks, the show, that's Meredith Taylor, uh, one of our sponsors. She sponsors the guest line. So uh, what should we say? Meredith Taylor on the Meredith Taylor guest line? On the yeah, Meredith Taylor on the McKellar Enterprise. That's, say, what, that's our cover. Yeah. yeah. Also, I, I've been saying her Twitter is at Mer Taylor, M-E-R, Mer. Mm -hmm. And it's Mayor, obviously.